perhaps it is interesting to, um, to go on a little bit farther on this problem of strategy. So, for example, in the case of Holland, uh, we had something like a population census. You were obliged to mm. fill in your papers and so on, you know. So this you would call if you are not filling in your papers, civil disobedience. Right. Now, I, I would be a little careful about that because uh, uh, going back to some very important point that Mr. Foucault made, one does not necessarily allow the state to define what is legal. Now, the state has the power to enforce a certain concept of what is legal, but power doesn't imply justice or correctness even. So the state may define something as civil disobedience and may be wrong in doing so. For example, in the United States, the state defines it as civil disobedience to, let's say, derail an ammunition train that's going to Vietnam. And the state is wrong in defining that as civil disobedience because it's legal and proper and should be done. It's proper to carry out actions that will prevent the criminal acts of the state, just as it's proper to violate a traffic ordinance in order to prevent a murder. If I was standing at a street corner and the traffic light were red, let's say I was standing in my car and I drove across the traffic light to prevent somebody from, let's say, machine gunning a group of people, of course that's not violation of law. It's an appropriate and proper action. No sane judge would convict you for such an action. Similarly, a good deal of what the state authorities define as civil disobedience is not really civil disobedience. In fact, it's legal, in fact, obligatory behavior in violation of the commands of the state, which may or may not be legal commands. So one has to be rather careful about, the, about calling things illegal, I think. Oui, mais alors là, je voudrais vous poser une question. Quand vous, quand aux États-Unis, mm. lorsque vous faites une action franchement illégale, which I regard as illegal, not just the state. No, the, the, uh, when the, the, the states, uh, an But action the state that regards the as illegal. state considers as illegal. Yeah. Est-ce que vous faites cette action parce que vous la trouvez juste yeah. en vertu mm. d'une justice yeah. idéale ou bien est-ce que vous la faites parce que yeah. la guerre de classe yes. la rend utile et nécessaire yeah. well, Est-ce que vous vous référez à une justice idéale voilà again, problème. Very often, when I do something which the state regards as illegal, I regard it as legal. Yes, that's because it. I regard the state as criminal. Alors, But in some instances, that's not true. That is, l let me be quite concrete about it uh, and move from the area of class war to imperialist war, where the situation is somewhat clearer and easier. Take international law, a very weak instrument as we know, but nevertheless it incorporates some rather interesting principles. Well, international law in many respects is the instrument of the powerful. That is, international law permits much too wide a range of, inter of international forceful intervention in support of existing power structures that define themselves as states and against the interests of masses of people who happen to be organized in opposition to states. But, in fact, international law is not solely of that kind. And in fact, there are interesting elements of international law, let's say embedded in the United Nations Charter, which permit, in fact, I believe, require the citizen to act against his own state in ways that the state will falsely regard as criminal. But nevertheless, he's acting legally because international law also happens to, pro to prohibit the threat or use of force in international affairs, except under some very narrow circumstances of which, for example, the war in Vietnam is not one which means that in the particular case of, let's say, the Vietnam War, the one that interests me most, the American state is acting in a criminal capacity, and people have the right to stop criminals from, from murdering people. Uh, just because the criminal happens to call, you a, to call your action illegal when you try to stop him, that doesn't mean it is illegal. I mean, a perfectly clear case of that is the present case of the Pentagon Papers in the United States, which I suppose you know about. Reduced to its essentials and forgetting legalisms, what is happening is that the state is trying to prosecute people for exposing its crimes. That's what it amounts to. C'est donc au nom d'une justice plus pure que vous critiquez le fonctionnement de la justice. Parce que c'est pour moi, si vous voulez, important de savoir ça, parce que nous avons actuellement en France un débat sur le problème de la justice et à propos de l'institution d'un tribunal mm. populaire yes. 
à propos de la justice, vous connaissez le problème. Des... Et un certain nombre de gens, euh, comme Sartre par exemple, pensent que pour faire actuellement la critique du système pénal en France, ou pour faire la critique de la, euh, des pratiques policières, de la manière dont la police se conduit, il faut faire une sorte de tribunal qui, au nom d'une justice idéale, d'une justice supérieure, d'une justice humaine en général, condamnera la pratique des juges français ou des policiers français. Et puis, il y a un autre groupe de gens, et je me sens... Enfin, je, je travaille avec ces gens-là, qui disent « Non, il ne faut pas faire cela parce que quand vous vous référez à la justice idéale, que le tribunal serait censé appliquer, vous vous référez en fait à un certain nombre d'idées de justice qui ont été formées à notre époque par un certain groupe d'individus euh, qui sont eux-mêmes, malgré tout, d'une façon directe ou indirecte, les produits de la société dans laquelle nous nous trouvons. Il faut attaquer les pratiques de la justice, il faut attaquer la police, il faut attaquer les pratiques policières, mais en termes de guerre et non pas en termes de justice. But you see, surely you believe that your role in the war is a just role, that you're fighting a just war, to bring in a concept from another domain. And that, I think, has to, is, is important. If you thought that you were fighting an unjust war, you couldn't follow that line of reasoning. And the only, see, I would like to slightly reformulate what you said. It doesn't seem to me that the differences between legality and ideal justice. It's rather between legality and better justice. Now, this better system may have its defects, certainly will. But comparing the better system with the existing system uh, and not being confused into thinking that our better system is the ideal system, we can then argue, I think, as follows, that the concept of legality and the concept of justice are not identical. They're not entirely distinct either. Uh, insofar as legality incorporates justice in this notion, in this sense of better justice, referring to a better society, then, we're ju then we should follow and obey the law and force the state to obey the law and force the great corporations to obey the law and force the police to obey the law, if we have the power to do so. Of Is course, it, not, it, if, it, but now, just f f finally, if in those areas where the legal system happens to represent not better justice, but rather the techniques of oppression that have been codified in a particular autocratic system, well, then a reasonable human being should disregard and oppose them, at least in principle. He may not, for some reason, do it in fact. Alors, je 